It's time for breaking bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's our goal. Hey! It's, our goal. hey. it's time for breaking bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's also a show. Hey! hey. Everybody, welcome to another edition of Breaking Bread with Tom Papa. Oh, oh, oh. my voice is uh, is tired. You can hear it. You can hear it, and it's a glorious thing because I just got back from being on the road. You guys, I was doing stand-up comedy on the road. Yes, I went to Omaha, Nebraska great place called The Waiting Room, a great theater, um, rock club theater. So great, so perfect. And we had two shows, it was a delight. I got on airplanes, I traveled, I got up early, all the same old habits from yesteryear. Getting up at five in the morning after doing a show till midnight, being with a strange man in a, in a car to the airport before the world is waking up, passing out, neck bobbing, flying, connecting flights because there's no flights anymore <laughs> going anywhere. It was all so grand. It was all so glorious. So forgive me if my voice is a uh, is just getting getting started. It was nice. I did an hour and a half each show and just kept on yapping away. So this is a good, comforting tired voice that we've got today. Also, it is compounded by getting back and getting excited and eating and drinking on a Sunday. I went a little crazy. Didn't eat too much insanity, but uh, I had this bottle of wine. It's called uh, Triga, which this is not an endorsement. This is just pure joy and love. There's certain times when you pop open a bottle of wine and the, the roof actually detaches from your house and shoots up into the ether and you are just, all of a sudden, you and your family are just transported to a fantasy land of ease and joy and smiles. And that's what that bottle of wine did. I got it from a friend, a good friend who has been on this program, the great Joel McHale, who when he was on, told us that he was a wine snob. Actually, he just said snob, and we added wine to it. Specifically, this is the wine part of his snobbery. Uh, there's no such thing as wine snobbery. I mean, there is, if you don't know what you're talking about, but he knows what he's talking about, and he gave me this beautiful bottle of wine when I dropped off bread at his house. And it's been a good month and a half before I was able to pop it open where my wife could participate. I couldn't do it all by myself. I didn't want to waste it. And uh, holy cow, just so, just so perfect. It completely, it completely buttoned up the weekend of going out and doing shows and coming back and being in a good space, knowing that we have another great week of podcasts, knowing that we had another weekend this coming weekend, I will be in Kansas City doing the Comedy Club, which is a newish place. And they've had some good acts go through who have been kind of inching their way back into live performing. And I will be there on Thursday, um, this Thursday through Saturday, which is, where are we? We're somewhere in April. It's April 19th, 20th, or it's like the 25th, around there. If, I don't know when you listen to this podcast. I don't know when you catch up. I know, uh, I know you might be, uh, this, you might be, this might be June for you. But this weekend, if you are staying up to date and you subscribe to the podcast, which uh, you really should do, because you get them downloaded and you pop up. I do it with my favorite podcast. Uh, I will be there. I'm so excited to go to Kansas City. I am going to eat steak again. I was in Omaha. I went to a place called Sullivan's. Great classic steakhouse. It was everybody wearing masks on the way in, but then you're inside and you're eating inside. And I know for parts of the country, you're like, yeah, Tom, we've been doing that for a while. Not us in California, not us. So it's a little treat. And I just went by myself. I had a nice meal, a beautiful steak, 
beautiful chopped salad, uh, one martini, and it was just, I was just, woo, we're on the road. <laughs> and I literally spent every waking moment just working on my act, just writing and rewriting and dozing off and then getting up and rewriting again and then bringing it to the stage. It was just purely like a, like a stand-up comedy sauna, not sauna, that would be dry and gross. A jacuzzi, yeah, a spa. I was just sitting in bubbles of comedy and enjoying myself and uh, it was really, really great. And uh, forgive me for going on about it, but this is a very exciting thing because it also indicates that we're crawling out of this. I'm so excited. Uh, we have a great show for you today. I don't want to waste much time because we've got Wayne Fetterman on, who is such a funny stand-up comedian. I've loved him forever. And he has a great new book out called stand The History of Stand-Up Comedy from Mark Twain to Dave Chappelle. And I, we just had such a great time. I went to the studio. We recorded it live and in person, gave him some bread. And he is just a delight. And he's just he should be writing about stand-up comedy because he loves stand-up comedy. And this book is great. And he is great. And he's just so silly and funny. We just had, we laughed the whole time, as you will see in just a moment. Then we're going to grab a quick bite with my good friend, Erin Foley, who's one of my favorite people on the planet and also a brilliant comedian and writer uh, on, in her own right. We're going to plug in with her because I was in, when I was in Omaha, the NCAA women's volleyball tournament was in town, as was, I think, the hockey tournament and something else. And Erin is all about sports, and she has been a big advocate for women's sports since I've known her. And she was always, she's just been yelling at people nonstop. You don't understand the level of competition wake up this is amazing stuff you all should be watching basketball volleyball whatever it is soccer <clears throat> and she's right and the world is catching on <laughs> the world is slowly catching on of how badass these uh these sports are it's really a marketing thing that's all it is and they need people like Erin out there telling people about it and uh so i just want to check in with her and tell her that i saw the decal for volleyball in the in the uh, elevator there in Omaha. It just made me think of her. So we're gonna grab a, a quick bite with her. I'm gonna give her a call when we're done with Wayne Fetterman. Okay, so let's not waste time because Wayne's is, uh, is a big meaty, a big meaty one. So um, that sounds gross, but you know what I'm talking about. And, uh, and uh, I feel like there was something else I needed to tell you guys. Are you doing okay? It's all about me this morning. Are you guys, how are you? I hope you're doing great. I really do. I hope you're doing well. I'm very proud of you. As I travel around and I see people just muddling through and getting back on flights and doing all the stuff that they're doing, I, I, I cannot say with, with, with no irony and no sarcasm, I am proud of all of you. Okay, enjoy my interview with Wayne Fetterman, and then we'll be back. I bake this for you. Tell, is that it came out this morning. May I touch it? Yes, it's all yours. Whatever you want to do to it. I'm, I'm taking yours. this home? You're taking that home. All right, I'm going to pick it up. It's mostly wheat, um, like one-tenth Is that right? All purpose. Is that correct? Is what correct? The bottom, bottom white having, stuff on the bottom? Yeah, it's, it's flour on the bottom. That's so it doesn't stick when it's in the Dutch oven. And I baked this. I made it all Is last night. Is that where night. the Van Dutch t-shirts come from? Is <laughs> yeah. that the same oven? The same oven. And then uh, this morning before my radio I show, it. I woke up and baked it so it would be f as fresh as possible. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I you love eat it. bread? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Even good. though I have to because uh, my numbers are high. Really? My numbers are a little elevated. They're not high yeah, yet. They're elevated. elevated. Pre, I'm pre. I'm pre. pre I've been pre. Oh, pre-diabetic? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, you're something else? Pre-high pre blood pressure. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been pre-high like, yeah. pre blood pressure, I think, since I was 25. Oh. Yeah. I'm, I'm pre-diabetic. <laughs> pre-diabetic? How does that happen? I have a terrible diet. I oh. just, I was, before I came over here, I was, I, I eat a lot of fast food. So. Where were you? Burger King. You don't Ooh, recognize really? this, the king? No, I uh, I have not eaten fast food since 1989. 
what happened? You were just like, new decade, it's over? No, it was, uh, it was actually a little before, because it was during college. It was, remember, remember back when we were in school, it was the McDonald's kerfuffle? Everyone was attacking McDonald's for their yes for their yeah. waste and yeah their yeah they abuse changed and... from the styrofoam to the right, paper right. yep yeah. I remember it. they were still styrofoamy at that time yeah, and yeah. I was just like there was so much news about how bad fast food was mm-hmm. that I just stopped and even when I was on the road I would just eat out of a gas station more than. You go to like a the McDonald's the mobile mart you would eat there I, I was a mobile mart connoisseur. I would uh, I would get let me, a, let some, me hear it let me hear I would it. get some fig Newtons, uh, oh. maybe, maybe some combos, some pretzel combos with the cheese stuffed in them. Um, would you get ever their hot dogs or hamburgers? Never. I mean, not never. I'm, I'm sure at one point, but it was not a. I never went back if I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not, not, none of the hot doggy things. I love the I love the Mobile Mart hot dog and hamburger. Do you really? Especially the cheeseburger. I mean, they do a little bit about it, my set, so I don't want to do that, but yeah. it's true. It's true. I just love the idea of it. Where do they come from? <laughs> There's obviously not a grill in the back. Like, where are these? What the scruntled employee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Took yeah. this out of the bag. Right. Oh yeah, thing, and then puts the oil next to, it and like, it's such a weird. <laughs> It's so great. I, I watched, I caught the end of Five Easy Pieces last oh, night. Oh my God. So which good. I've never seen in its entirety. Uh huh. And uh, they're running all the Oscar noms and stuff yeah. you know, through through film, and Jack Nicholson won for that or was nominated for that. Yep. So I only caught the last scene oh, when he's sense. in the, like, it's like the Fargo, North Dakota yeah. mini mart gas station. Like, and she goes to get coffee. He's so fed up with the girl he's with. Right. And she goes off to get coffee and just see. And I'm like, I said out loud to myself, I haven't seen anything, but he's going to leave her at that mini mart. Yeah. And he goes into the bathroom and he comes out and they just, the capturing of the, the ta- time the they winter, take, yeah, yeah. the winter bleakness that the, the sound of the truck coming in and this big truck pulls up and blocks his car from when he comes out of the bathroom and he, you know, the scene, he gets, yeah, yeah, he gets in with the trucker and leaves his girl who's there in the car. But it was really the capturing, because you know, as a comedian, you've been in that bleak mini mart gas station thing when leaving you were touring. A girl, leaving a girl. Uh, yes, I've done well, that many the tr- times. Well, the, the, the trick, the twist with us is you're always trying to get the girl. Right, 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 right. From the mini march just to please come with you because you're so lonely. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's a whole different... Yeah, yeah. No, that movie is obviously... Inc- I just love the pace of that movie. It yeah. Is... I haven't seen the rest of it. But I, oh. just, I saw him talking to his, to his old man. Right. And then that scene. And just you know it's that, about piano you know, playing. It's those, about piano playing. Those are the five easy pieces. Oh, you know, it's, it's not about women. So just take your mind out of the gutter. It's oh. not that. Yeah, I know you thought it was about like easy girls and stuff oh. like no. <laughs> I know you. All right, you want to hear some some Turner Classic movie implanted trivia in my yes, head about the Oscars? I love, I love TCM. I love Oscar trivia. Let's okay, do it. Jack Nicholson has the most Oscar noms for an actor, a male actor. Right. Uh, how many do you think that would oh, be? Oh, the number. I, 11? Mm. That makes... I think it's 12. 12, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The all-time leader of, of nominations. Meryl. Yeah. With... Oh. Is it 20? It's like 29. 29? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Have you ever, is that crazy the yeah, difference yeah, yeah, between yeah. those two numbers yes yeah God. i mean it's not crazy it's just a, it's an actual number so it's, <laughs> it's not some wild thing <laughs> but it's the, it's like she's been nominated every year of her career practically yeah that's quite impressive and she yeah. only has like three wins right don't know that i yeah i think she has a very asleep. low number of wins that's oh. why she's not that good not that anyone good. can get nominated. Yeah, anyone can get nominated. Right. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> wow, and not that many wins. Yeah, but the bleakness of that on the road thing, I was just like, oh, they just to let it sit like that. Yeah. And capture yeah. That. Oh yeah. Uh, but you, I'm a movie buff, so go ahead. So you would go to the McDonald's and the Wendy's and the what have you, love and, it. and love go, it. And, yeah. and you have been your whole career. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons I am pre-diabetic. 
And this, but I try to watch. I try to, you know what I do? I don't eat the fries. Mm. I like try not to have, because that's just pure carb loading. It's like I'm running a marathon or swimming the English <laughs> Channel or something. Putting Vaseline on yeah, your body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why, why <laughs> <Goggles>. is goggles? <laughs> <laughs> why is the what what causes diabetes? Is um, it sugar? Elevated, yeah, elevated it's blood sugar. And elevated glucose. blood yeah, sugar. Yeah, and glucose. I believe. And All you, I know is that they, there's numbers. Uh, you know, I it's know. Just I'm numbers. trying to get in shape for my physical right now. You are, of yeah. course. That's the. It's like cleaning the house before the maid comes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going in there <laughs> like this. <guy. laughs> I'm I'm gonna get in shape. But luckily for me, I do exercise, so that's been you a do. great. Yep. Yeah, yeah. How many days a week do you go, pull into a fast food joint? It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. No, it might no, be three. There's no judgment here. A, th- a week? So yeah. Yeah, I'd say probably three. Now I read a study once that whenever we're asked a question and we all do it, oh, I love we, it. We 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 lie just a little bit. Right. Like if you ask me how much I weigh, I would say I'm like 194, which mm-hmm. means I'm really 198. Gotcha. And so when you say three, you it, think it's, usually, it's probably like five? a little more, a little more, like five. I don't think it's five days. No, I don't think it's five, but it is. You're horrified that it's five, but it's five. <laughs> Actually, five is a lie. That's under also. <laughs> Just, so your little psychology trick is way off. It's actually eight. I'm there twice one day and then once the rest of the week. <laughs> I'm guilty of that, though. I'm guilty of, of just shaving the numbers off just a little bit. Of course. You know, that's why people lie. Why? Is to make themselves seem better than they are. Right. Yeah, that's, that's like, the main reason people lie. What did that cost? That was two hundred bucks. Right, right, right. It was only two twenty. Why didn't I say two twenty? <laughs> right, because you want to seem like you got the great deal. You <laughs> yeah. got the great interest rate on your house. You get the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. The yeah. kids doing great in school. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. all about self. Because I've been thinking a lot about this, uh-huh. which is this is something like I always thought like why did I go into comedy? Like, right. What was the whole thing? And part of it is to be completely honest mm-hmm. is. Like, I'd like the feeling of being a big shot. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I like it. I know it's... I get that, too. It seems like a like a narcissistic, self-involved, reasoned... I mean, it's one of the side effects of it, but I like yeah. kind of being a big shot. And then I was hearing this guy, I don't know his name, but he was talking about that that's a human driving characteristic is, he called it status. Mm-hmm. That people are always trying to improve their status as part of humanity. Right. So, it was Which like, is why capitalism works. Because you're tapping into that drive, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why socialism and stuff doesn't really they doesn't really satisfy that human urge. You actually have to tamp down. Look, I'm not Chomsky. I don't know why you're attacking me. What well, you and your hippie, hippie socialist, dippy socialist <laughs> ideals? No, but I've always thought about that. It's like this is a natural thing. Like it's the best way to yeah yeah. So I guess that's part of it. And so the lying, oh, yeah. the lying part, mm-hmm. back to your original question before the bread, was I think that's, that's part of it, is you're trying to increase your status a little bit with these lies. Right. Like that's the underlying right. evolutionary impulse. Tom will think I'm a little better if I go three times. If I say five times, he's walking out of here thinking uh, a little less of me. And Tom is you. Yes. Okay. I just want to know who you were talking about. <laughs> I'm, I'm in your. I'm being your brain. Okay. Right now. I, just... <laughs> I was playing the role of your brain. Oh, okay. Oh, I right. thought you were into movies. That's weird. I didn't, you know, it's weird how you didn't keep up. All right. I didn't quite understand what that. Was. Okay. Right. Like that's. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. But I. Th- I. I try to be. I try to live in some kind of honesty. Mm-hmm. I try to, but it's. I do difficult. Too. It's difficult at it, times. It is, and it's. It's like I was writing a thing the other day about. Uh, because I'm a minister, like I've married people. I can marry people. Of course, I got the thing. of course. And uh, I was writing a thing about how I've never done confessions. Oh, that's great. And I'm always interested in like, they say like everybody, everybody sins. Right. So what's, what are those sins? And of course you'd want a couple murders in there to get you excited about. <laughs> right, it. But right. most of them were going to be like these dumb things of like, okay, so what how do i sin like what are my sins and it probably boils down to most sins of most people this is a little white lie that kind of stuff i don't know i think 
people cheat on other people. Right. I feel like, you know, right. where they flirt with somebody that they wouldn't want their spouse to know. That they wouldn't have done in front of their I'm spouse. sorry, is that a sin? <laughs> Because I feel well, like they pick up a girl I've been very flirty. Station. I've been very flirty in this interview. Oh Jesus! <laughs> Hold on a second. Let me pour some of them. <laughs> uh, but the but the but the lies are, yeah. Like I try and be honest too, and I think it's, I try. I try to, and I even to the point where, if we have to cancel on somebody, yes. If we have to cancel on somebody, here's a here's a trick I've learned as a grown up. Mm -hmm. Um. Just say you can't make it. You don't have to go into the excuse, the excuse, and the mm -hmm. dog threw up, or mm -hmm. I, my, someone's got a stomach ache, or whatever. That's because you don't is. want that person to feel bad, make feel, have hold you in a lower esteem, right? Right. Yeah. Right. But I find that if you just tell people, "So sorry, can't make it." Right. They, unless it's like really tight friend, like family right, level right, of like, right. "Oh, come on, why?" Uh, most of them don't ask for details. Okay. So don't extend hold the on, lie. Hold on, I'm going to write this don't down. Don't throw the lie out. I didn't know I was going to get tips. I didn't know I was going to get Here's my stats, tip. If I were to... Stat, the Meryl Streep stats. Uh, hold on. If I were to sum it up, I would say don't lie unless, unless they make you. <laughs> <laughs> Try and get out of it All without right. a lie. I hope to God you didn't break bake this bread that the whole thing was... Uh, that would be awesome. That's so funny. That's a comedy <laughs> brain because I literally was thinking, what? I can't wait for the opening to tell him. And truth be told, I didn't bake that bread. <laughs> <laughs> I found this at Kelson's. <laughs> oh, was that the truth? No. No, I okay. okay. I didn't know. All right. The joke of the joke. And now we're in yeah, some weird thing. No. I, uh, don't get the fries. That seems to me like the thing I wanted to get, would want to get the most. Yeah. They're very, it's when you eat carbs, it's like I said before it's like having a blanket on the inside it's so comfortable it's so comfortable <laughs> it's unbelievable oh my god i know yeah, and yeah. i like see all the guys the rock and yeah. the chris hemsworth and you're talking about chris rock chris rock yeah yeah all, all the guys that are in the gym early yeah, posting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah he's buff he's crazy <laughs> and uh it's always no carbs just you know just yeah. not eating carbs and then once a month they have a cheat and they'll post the carbs that they ate right and, right and it's like oh boy <laughs> and it's like no i walk into my kitchen in the morning and as soon as the coffee starts i start thinking mm -hmm. how much butter am i going to put on the toast because toast is just like yeah it's... makes you feel warm Okay, what do you do with the butter? Do you have the butter in or out of the refrigerator? Well, this was a big. This is a big family controversy. Okay, okay. Um, I, don't, I hope it's not triggering you. We can move on to another thing. No, I'll because I, I noticed I'm your hands of, starting to shake. Yeah, what was the thing? <laughs> Let me take a deep breath. Um, I was always a was I was always an in the refrigerator guy. Until and and then. Oh, and then not until no we'll get to until <laughs> okay and then i was on martha stewart's show okay and any I, other credits you want to say uh, in the middle of the story oh we're just getting started <laughs> okay and then chris rock called <laughs> <laughs> and then uh and because my wife was always on the counter and mm -hmm. i was in the fridge it all comes down to how you were raised. And I was, we were always fridge people, which I know there's problems trying to cut that butter with the knife and clanking on the thing and spread it onto toast. Yeah, seems impossible. Seems impossible. Right. Keep going. So I throw in there. So Martha Stewart will end this fight once and for all. Yeah. In or out. And she says, I said, because my wife likes, says to keep it out on the counter. And Martha Stewart stopped making the crepe or whatever she was oh, making no. in the segment and went, oh, no, don't leave it on the counter. And I was like, well, that ends the argument Indica forever in front of a national audience. Yeah. Martha Stewart, the queen of everything. She says that I was right. Keep it in the fridge. Right. I start baking bread about six years ago. Yeah. And get really good at it. And there's nothing better than sourdough toast, which is really get actually pretty good for you mm -hmm. it doesn't have a high glycemic content to it okay. it actually devours its own sugars and i'm like you know what yeah without making a big deal of it and good thing my wife doesn't listen to this podcast right she keeps the butter out um, i'm no longer putting it back in is this, is this gonna ever gonna be a bit is this gonna be because it's actually a pretty funny premise is it i would write it down really yeah <laughs> I do, because you do so much domestic stuff, yeah. and I think that's such a specific, 
Like you'd rather mm -hmm. be right but have the butter out than lose the marriage. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> Like, this is not the hill you're going to die on. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I quietly just, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what? It's kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thing. I'm in a relationship. <laughs> Guess what? It's a give. It's a take. This is one of my gift parts. <laughs> and I have done a bit of a shallow dive on the internet. And they say, like, for up to, like, a week, okay. uh, if you're using it actively, there's right. nothing wrong with having it out. Right. Bacteria-wise. Yeah, yeah. I'm in the refrigerator. But again, you are. it's... It has to do with the, you know, the way I was brought up, which is called the right way. <laughs> right? That's how I felt. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, you know, there's also have a little patience and a little foresight and you know, you're going to be cutting this toast. Oh, I see. The have night before? 20 minutes before. Okay. Pull it out. It's a little softer. You cut through it. Have you ever microwaved butter so it's warm? Yes. Always a disaster because it creates that <laughs> yeah, hole in the yeah, top yeah, 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 right. and starts oozing out. Yeah. Micro and then you put it back in the fridge. microwave technology is fascinating because it's like obviously one thing is on fire and the other thing is still frozen and like, how is this yeah no plastic <laughs> no plastic no pla definitely no no aluminum foil <laughs> things are just plastic just, yeah off. yeah it's just craziness they're just absolute pandemonium yeah. you know, this meatball's frozen the thing okay how's it been going with your book pretty good thank you pretty yeah. good yeah yeah I, that's a lie again? obviously I <laughs> <laughs> that's a, a lie. slight lie it's whew, whew. no one's read it jesus uh <laughs> no it is it's it's pretty good i mean i'm very happy with it and thank you for i was on your show talking about it yeah forgive me the title again it's called the history of stand-up from mark twain to dave Chappelle. right so i do the whole story of it so great yeah yeah i'm gonna send you a copy is that cool that would be great i'd love it yeah 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 i almost thought you might walk in with one I did, but I, I, there is actually one in here, but I want to get you a, this is the, okay, this is going to be honesty. Let's do it, right? Let's do it. This is self-published book. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, even though the publisher says artist media something, it's. It's you. Yeah. <laughs> it's Wayne. It's Wayne. <laughs> right. So one of the, there's a lot of, um, that I've since found out since publishing this, mm. there's a lot of uh, drawbacks to that. And there's also a bunch of positives, yeah. a bunch of negatives. One of the negatives is you can't get a major paper to cover it because they won't do it. They won't do it. New York Times will not if it's self-published. Yeah. How archaic. I know. You would think. I mean, they're they're on the net. And they've got interns. They can screen <laughs> right, the books right. and be like, this is legit. So that's that's been a little bit of a, a roadblock to kind of getting the whole word out. Right. Um, but right. on the positive side, because it is printed on demand. Right. So someone orders and they print it they or print. they print five and then they, you know, they'll have something like, right. So I can constantly update the book. So the earlier oh. versions, there's some typos, there's sure. some things, there's some things a little missing, yeah, things yeah. like that. So now I feel like it took like a, a week of like, people would be, why is this? Why are you spelling Ron Funches with two S's? Like, you right. know, this, like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. You know, you have 1,700 facts right, and then Who you're like, cares? Yeah, it doesn't matter. I know. It doesn't matter. Someone actually on one of my books <laughs> sent a thing to my agent <laughs> saying, uh, heads up on some typos for when it goes to paperback. I was like, <laughs> right in the trash. Didn't even look you at it. You didn't even want nah, to? Nah, no, don't care. That's, I love it. I love it. Who cares? Who cares? I do. I do. You because, do? Yeah, I, a little bit. A little mm. bit. I want it. so um, so anyway. So I do have a copy here. If you I want, am going to order if you want, the book. No, 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 no. I please, no, please, no, please, because please. this I know what this takes, and I know what it, what what it does, and I would love to participate. I order all my friends' books. Okay. So all right, wow, yeah. Oh. yeah. Did you just call me your friend? Hold on a second. We get it. Well, so, I haven't ordered it yet. Oh, we'll I see. see. <laughs> I sold it. Let me pour, the... <laughs> pour that back in there. <laughs> you funnel, funnel. <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> I love the subject. You do? I what, love the subject. What do you want to know? What do you want to know? Well, I love the... Okay, I'm going to take out an earlier I'll, copy. I'm just going to take it out so you can... Yeah, do so it. You can, we can so make we fun can of see it. it. We yeah. can make fun of it. What I really love is the the Mark Twain... Yeah? I love the, I love the uh, Ken Burns documentary on Mark Twain. Yes. So good. Yeah. And did I tell you that I visited the his writing hut... 
No. In Elmira, New York, at Elmira College, I think. No, no. They have, do you know about his hut? I don't know a lot about Twain. I just put him on the cover okay. to sell books. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? Like people like 50, 100 years from now are like, I just put Fetterman on the book because it, it moves. <laughs> it moves. It moves, it moves go, yeah. Got to move merchandise. That is a big name, Mark Twain. <laughs> right. So in Elmira, in Elmira yeah. there is uh, his writing cottage where that his uh, sister-in-law built for him. Oh, okay. When he was living with the family and his family mm -hmm. at their house in the summer, they, I think they wanted him out of the house. He's oh smoking 30 cigars a day. He's writing. Oh my God. So they built him, it's an octagon shaped yeah. uh, writing hut. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's so perfect. It's all windows around it, right. a fireplace, a little writing desk. He could smoke all the cigars he wants. He sit, sat out there all day long right. and he would write. And they've moved this from that property to Elmira University or college. And it sits on oh, the wow. campus. Okay. And I was doing a show around there and heading down to Pennsylvania. And I looked it up and I'm like, I can go visit it. And I was, this was like in February of whatever year. And I was... Like, can we make reservations? I mean, we don't have that much time. Mm -hmm. I don't want to fight the crowds. I want to get... Right? There's no crowds. The mobs of Twain. <laughs> the mobs of Twain, Twain people in Elmira oh, in February. Okay, maybe I should have picked a different guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe he's not as popular as I thought he was. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so I... Uh, right, the new edition comes out. <laughs> right, exactly. It's, it's, like, not, it's From not Will Twain Rogers to John Mulaney. <laughs> <laughs> right, from Mulaney to Chappelle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I, was, I am really intrigued. I love the whole thing because he was really our first stand-up. Not well. When but, you read the book, you're gonna yeah. find out there's a guy before him that showed him how to do it. Oh, really? Yeah. There's and a who guy. Who's that? Artemis. Artemis Ward is his name. Artemis Ward, and, and he's phenomenal. This guy's really interesting. Really. And I had not heard of him until I don't know if you know the comic Rich Scheidner. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. He was is like all over him. So he told me about. It. I was like, okay, what is this story? And yeah, he was a writer, comedy writer. On at a newspaper, they would you know, right. his real name, believe it or not, is Charles Brown, like Charlie Brown, wow. the first comic. And then it. we we probably would have known him if he. Yeah, yeah. And so he uh, he was very popular writing these columns for newspapers, co comedy columns, misspelled right. words, you know, eighteenth yeah. century kind of stuff. Sure. Um, and like Norm Crosby, I guess. So he. So one day he's, you know, part of his job is to cover like the entertainment beat. Guess who comes in town? The minstrel show. Guess what happens in the minstrel show? One of the comics in the minstrel show starts doing his bits from his newspaper articles. Uh, like, what the hell is happening? Here? Yeah, I recognize this material. I wrote it three weeks ago before this got syndicated. Uh, and so he, that gave him the idea. It's like, maybe I yeah. could perform as Artemis. I created this character. Right. And that's. He's hearing the laughs. Yeah. Probably yeah. killing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So he was like, and there was a bunch of serious lectures at that time. Mm -hmm. That was that was a big part of Lyceum Movement, it was called. Right. And he's like, okay, I'm going to do a comedy lecture. So he quits his job, moves to New York, publishes a book of his columns. So he has a little, you know, yeah. uh, what's the word? Passive income happening. Right. Like even then. Wow. And then starts and does this thing called Stories About the Baby. And the whole bit, the whole hour, he does hour and 20. The whole bit, he never mentions stories about the babies during the whole, he always like, gets to it and then does a diversion <laughs> and then a diversion of the diversion of the thing. That's and great. And people eat it up. And guess who sees him? Samuel Clemens is like, oh my God, I'm mm. a funny guy. Wow. I'm a writer. And that's how the Samuel Clemens learned to be a comedian. Wow. But yeah. That's an amazing story. I know. I know. I know. It's pretty wild. It's that's pretty wild. So, what's so wild. It's wild because there's so uh, many this things. Is wild stuff. <laughs> wild stuff. There's, <laughs> there's some elements that are uh, like lifting material, like yes. that minstrel show comes through. Yeah, yeah. Immediately. They were desperate for laughs. They read this thing, not even thinking about it, throw it up on stage. Yeah, and yeah. Act see like what it's happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's crazy. Little did they know the guy was in the crowd, like reviewing the show. Like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. 
So did he tour? Like, did he start going? Not only does around? he tour, he's getting like up to a dollar a seat, sometimes even more. So you go to a 1300 seat theater or right. opera house or something. That's a lot of money. It was In like, like 1890. No, this is 1862 Whoa. Early, during civil war times. Whoa. So he's like making the equivalent of maybe 30 grand a night would be. Jeez. So Louise. it's, and okay, but this is the other interesting part to me uh -huh. about Mark Twain. So not only does he see him like I can do this, Mark Twain ends up losing all his money on that printing press. Right. I call it his startup. His startup just, he, led, he lost all his money. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons he toured. Mm. He was like, oh, Artemis can get a buck a person. I think I can. I'm right. more popular than that dude. But anyway, Artemis goes to England. That's how popular this show is. Yeah. Puts it up over there and then dies a few months later of tuberculosis. Classic right on brand for an 1800s kind of person caught from the from I the think he had it before I think he had it before he got to England but it was you know it's so damp over there and yeah so he dies of <laughs> gets consumed like I said consumed by consumption jeez and he dies dies 32 32 and Clemens is like, like hey, bingo. bingo. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Starts those. doing his old bits. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so starts almost <laughs> getting to the baby right, story. Right, 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 right. The lane is wide open. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. It's yeah. amazing more people don't know of him. And I'm Artemis? Yeah. They do, but it's they they think of him more in the literature part than in the stand up part. Uh, okay. And that's what Rich was like, No, you gotta really Right. Yeah, so I'm, So when you were doing research for the book and yeah. figuring stuff out do people claim Artemis as the first stand up? Some do, but I don't. Right. I don't. You don't. No. Because you don't think tuberculosis is funny. <laughs> No, I do think to break this is funny, but I no, I think because obviously you saw a comedian in that minstrel show, so somebody being funny in that show, right, right, some racist, some racist guy <laughs> was killing it, just in killing blackface, it, killing in blackface. So yeah, and who knows, there yeah. might have been a guy, you know, some but were they Jebediah doing... dude, you know, who's mm -hmm. making the Pilgrims laugh? I don't know, right. So yeah, but he and there were court let me jesters, it, right? I mean, there of course, were like, of course, were, of course. But the idea of in America standing on stage with no minstrel show, yeah. backing you up, and just for an hour twenty yeah. going, yeah, like, it's almost the definition of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but this is pre microphone. There's no recordings of him. There's no recordings of Twain. Right. And then the next generation, Will Rogers and a guy named Burt Williams, suddenly. They're in movies. Mm -hmm. They're on vaudeville stages. They're making records like they. So now yeah. we're getting a little closer to what getting a little we we know as show business, right? As opposed to just some weird lecture just circuit. That, Are there recordings of Will Rogers? Oh, tons! Of, like tons. doing stand up, like tons. Yeah, yeah, yeah tons. And what tons. year was he? Well, he kind of hits early. I mean, he he came out. It's just fascinating. He came out of the Wild West show. There mm -hmm. was something called, you know, like Annie Cody Oakley. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Annie, get your gun. That right, kind of thing. Right. So he came out of that tradition. He's Cherokee, uh -huh. but he was a he, he first built himself as the Cherokee kid. But he became a roper and a cowboy basically, okay. and um, he just wanted to be in vaudeville. And would do this roping act, and whenever something went wrong, he'd make a funny comment. People loved it. Uh -huh. Guess what? More funny comments, less roping. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> they were eventually just carrying a rope. Yes. <laughs> just a prop. Lariat, or Lariat. I don't know how to pronounce it. So, uh, yeah. And right. then he, I mean, he was so huge. It's he was not huge. even, not even. Yeah. And anyone who ever does political comedy, mm -hmm. that can be definitely traced directly to him. Right. Directly. So any of the SNL weekend guys. Right. Amber he, Ruffin. He was. He's the first one to really do politics and make it like, oh, we can laugh at that. Right. He's the first comedian to do jokes in front of a president, went to, about the president with the president in the crowd. Really? Yeah, in Baltimore it happened. Jeez. And he, what year was he? Like, that was the 20s? Yeah, yeah. basically, he kind of hit, I mean, it was everything. He had yeah. newspaper articles. Mm -hmm. So it's it's interesting how these technologies, like Ward and, and Twain also wrote articles and stuff in books. Right. That became, like, more radio and right. or the stage. So Yeah. So, yeah, Will Rogers had his newspaper column. He had... 
a bunch of, you know, he did films. He did like 50 movies. Yeah. And so. So isn't that interesting? It, that's another thing that hasn't changed, really. Of tell like, me. That you need, uh, like, yeah. just so, the guy just doing hyphen, stand-up. Hyphen. Yeah, hyphen. Yeah, no question. Right. Oh, you've no got, question. You know, you There got, isn't really many stand-ups who just, there's Brian Regan and that's right. it. Right. Yeah, I think it's, <laughs> no. I think it and, is. But, and even he does projects. And I know now, he, he started doing projects after he became yeah. famous, though, right. I feel. Right. Right? Like, there was no Brian Regan right. thing. It was just stand-up. Right. And hammering on Letterman and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. So good. So good. And I guess Sebastian a bunch. is similar. He's in... <laughs> He's in the, he is now. Yeah, he's in but, movies. But he start but not, but after he started selling, like he popped and then got popped movies, in right? You just way I write about those, you know, do you know about yeah. his four nights at I mean four shows at Madison Square Garden? Yeah. <laughs> Friday, Saturday, eight point two million dollars gross. Oh really? Yeah. Jeez Louise. In the round, four shows, weekend gig. That's just a weekend gig. <laughs> it's just a Is weekend. it a Thursday? No, no. <laughs> I don't have to do Sunday. Wow. Just Friday, Saturday. Just Friday, Saturday. I'm not going to do a Sunday show. $8 million. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he didn't have like the hit TV show. Or no, the, that's true. But I'm, right? I think most comedians hit as a comic and then hyphen out. Right? And also, this is a, a little bit of boomer talk because, yeah, yeah he didn't have a sitcom. Right. But Facebook took his stuff and... Everybody saw it. There was other media where his stuff was able to spread. Yeah, we're in this. We're in the internet. Look at what's happening yeah. here. There's cameras. Yeah. What's, yeah. I mean, yeah. this is a perfect example of it. Oh, God. Something that, um, I don't know, Lenny Bruce didn't have to do was podcasting. Right. right. You know? Yeah, yeah. So after this podcast and you make your deal for Madison Square Garden, <laughs> can I open for you? I'd love it. Just on one of the shows? Have you played Carnegie Hall? I have not. I was hoping you were going to lie. I was hoping that I was going to bring it back. I have not either. That's one of my goals. It's so, yeah, it's beautiful. I was backstage during Seinfeld uh, and yeah. those guys when they did the uh, the 9-11 show mm -hmm. with Cosby and all those guys. Right. And uh, I did not get on to go on the stage, though. It's incredible. Yeah. I don't know why I want to play that room, but I just... I, it's, it's magical. It's, yeah. yeah. And, and I feel like comedians do really well in there. The coolest part, because it's yeah. like, it's is that the there's no wings. Yeah. Like, the door is part of the wall. Yeah. And, and it opens and you're on stage. Yeah. A lot of comics have done it in recent years yes, because yeah. of the New York Comedy Festival. Correct. It always puts somebody up. Yep. Yep. Uh, so we'll, we'll do it one day. <laughs> you and I. Bob and Fetterman, third a third of the crowd will be there. <laughs> In blackface. <laughs> just to see if we can and get the people talking. the rest, free tickets, free tickets. <laughs> we just wanted it crowded. We didn't care if we lost money on it. Yeah, yeah. no, that's a, that's a kind of a dream. Any other dream um, venues for you? Dream venues? Mm, no. And you know what? It's interesting that you say that because I never really thought about it. Like there's... Yeah. There's, you know, there's a whole, any kind of old theaters I would love to play, but I was talking with Joe Coy. Yes. And Joe Coy's vision in his head was always to play these big arena the shows. The arena shows. Like he would go and watch Kevin Hart. He saw Kevin Hart and yep. saw what it could be. And in his head, his little manifestation, he that was his dream. Like he wanted that thing. And I was like, Oh, I, I never really wanted that thing. Right. You know what I mean? Like maybe there is something to having the dream, maybe not the arena, yeah, but. Yeah, it's called a goal. A maybe, goal. Maybe, <laughs> is this the first you're hearing about this? <laughs> yeah, this the, I was I, just like, like okay, yeah, just see what happens. More people are coming. More people are coming. It's a thousand people tonight. This is good. Okay. Yeah, it's a goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you do that? Do you have like in your mind like? I mean, I, I do. Uh, do you write them down in January and put them on your board? No, I, do, I don't. I mean, in a way, I do write them down. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> my, it's just like my show business dreams are so absolutely insanely big and absurd and you know, delusional is almost the word <laughs> I would use. Which. 
is everybody's dream though. I but mean, every time I like like I book a like I book a commercial, I'm like, yeah. oh, this character in this commercial is gonna be on a sitcom, gonna be a thing, and I'm gonna be like the Azuzu guy. Sure. Like it's just I immediately I'm I think we all a, do though. Oh you do? Like, yeah, hundred percent. It's uh what's the word for it? It's like you're a fantastic yeah it's not i can't think of the word for it it's, a fabulous it's like i'm an into yeah like i'm like oh. but i think that's what i mean i don't think kevin hart creates kevin hart without thinking that way right right really i don't i think that we all kind of have that thing yeah so yeah yeah i mean that would be one is definitely carnegie but i don't mm -hmm. I, it's not like on my list of like i'm gonna play carnegie hall this year so right maybe i should maybe yeah maybe dial should, it in yeah maybe i should joke coy it I know there is something to <laughs> there's the something to <laughs> there's something to those <laughs> visions those really s I know. stark well I mean I feel like younger comedians have that they have their mm. and they call it like a bucket list or something like that I just don't like I was that just term. so happy to be like, a comedian yeah. I'll just be part of the team. Just to be like, yeah. wow, I can't believe, I still, to this day, I'm like, Ray Romano knows me. Yeah. You know a, what I mean? Like, yeah, course, and, I, and I, I went up after what's his face and I did really well. Yeah, and yeah. No, I, I'm with you. That I'm, was I'm such so a, with you. that was such the dream. I didn't really think until this conversation. <laughs> That it was more than that. Is this an inflection point in your life? <laughs> yeah. Term I'd never heard of until a year ago, and now I use it every other day. Inflection point? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, you know, there's that thing of, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much of it is you really make happen, like, in you that do. specific way. You do. I feel like way. people do. I think people do yeah. manifest stuff with, yeah. with very determined work. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a work situation. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you generate a lot of material. I do. I mean, look, I, I'm very successful. Right. And uh, <laughs> you have that new butter bill bit. You're gonna <laughs> couldn't we get it out? I, you know, who else makes bread like this? Nobody. Right. right. Nobody. I I didn't even want a big bread. I just put it on my vision board, and then next thing you know, there's vision bread coming board. out of the oven. Uh, but I think that um, it it's interesting, like just in the little stories that you're telling about the history of it, like mm -hmm. that there was all these kind of. Like it's changed in a lot of ways, and in a lot of ways it hasn't That's the changed theme of at the book. all. That's the theme of my book. Is it really? Yes. Um, yes, that is the theme of the book. Yes, we still have to do, but basically the main yeah. up, but it's, you know, we'll see what happens after it all, all comes back. But mm -hmm. the main job descriptions remain the same, which is right. you're on stage, as I call it, in that terrifying to euphoric moment mm -hmm. of getting laughs. Right. So it's, Bob Hope has that. Jack Benny has it. Yeah. You have it. Right. An open micer has it. Right. Like it's all the same. Yeah. Thing. It's all yeah. the same. Chappelle has it. You know. And is there anybody that became successful? Yeah. And kept being successful who wasn't kick ass funny? Oh. Well, because there are people that come in. Yeah. I know. And then can kind of like. They game it. They a can, moment. They can game it. They can game it. They yeah. were in a big film. Yeah, yeah. And so they decided they were going to tour. Yeah, yeah. Or they, they grabbed onto something political and they were going to tour. Mm -hmm. But has there been anybody that continues well, to go along that path that's I, you funny know, isn't the core? It, I don't think so. I, I really don't think so. Because eventually people are going to stop coming to your show if it's just a tirade or just mm -hmm. an embarrassing... Hang. Yeah, just I, I hang, but... Yeah. I think one of the things I try to be in the book is very not judgmental about comedians from different generations because mm -hmm. comedy is for the people here now. Yes. That's what it's for. 100%. The language, the thing, the mm -hmm. references, all of it. All of so it. So that's why it ages so quickly. Yeah. So it's, yeah. yeah. So even someone super edgy, yeah. like, like Lenny Bruce, sometimes people are like, like Patton's like, I don't even quite, is this runny? Is what, uh -huh. you know, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, I was like, and I can understand that. You have to kind of like readjust your thing, so even much. to connect with him yeah. on a comedic level. Mm -hmm. And I think a great example is Mort Saul. Right. That's a great example of like, oh, man. I mean, he was on the cover of Time Magazine. He was he making was people huge, huge in, 19, in the 50s yeah. laugh. There's no doubt about it. So it's not like, Killing oh, him. he's not as good as, you know, whatever, Kennison or uh, Carlin or, right. you know, one of my heroes or something yeah. like that. So, so I'm just like, if he achieved that and worked for all those years, that's what, you know. 
What do you think about that? What do I think about what? About the, like not like the idea why it that, ages out? Yeah, why it ages out, and does that scare you at all? Yeah, I mean, no, it doesn't scare me, but I it surprises me. It surprises me because, like, we know we can see as comedians, we can watch the Marx Brothers or Laurel mm -hmm. and Hardy and see and once in a while you're caught really caught yeah, 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 and yeah. laugh like right right I saw Laurel but it's not like the hangover no yeah right right it's not hitting you 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 are watching it almost as a student that's why I love your book like it's well, thank you you kind of you do get surprised and there are some moments that will make anyone laugh who's not a student of right it. right like you know even at um at the comedy cellar you know they run the Chaplin, oh, on, yeah. on, uh, nonstop on the screen. Well, the thing upstairs. in the yeah with the lion is incredible. And those things, like I'll watch. I've been there for twenty years, yeah. and you'll see like during the day when I would sneak in there and write or whatever, mm -hmm. and you'd see a family and kids, like they were watching it and laughing, yeah, like they're good. laughing at Chaplin, like they're laughing at this thing. So that, so physical, I think, is a little different than verbal, for sure. Yeah, for so sure. And he's playing this clown really right well right? yeah the tramp, tramp yeah. clown. yeah yeah and by tramp i mean he's loose and that he sleeps oh, a lot. what a whore what a <laughs> well, worse. actually right he really <laughs> kind of was um but it it did surprise me so anyway i'm uh like i would always look i would always i would watch george burns or i mm -hmm. would watch you know with gracie and you'd watch all these old comics and you were i was just digesting it all Right. And so I think, I, but then as I got older and I started, when I became a comedian and went along, I started to re really observe that I was more a student of comedy than the regular people yep. because people were starting to not know Sam Kinison's name. Right. When I was standing at the Laugh Factor, I remember it distinctly. Right. And uh, some comics my age, right. a little younger, who were good, right. did not know Sam Kinison. And I was like, oh man, it doesn't last. Cause he was in his moment, just cr the, no one bigger. I mean, no he one, just crushed. Yeah. I mean, a meteor. Meteor. <laughs> that crashed into comedy. <laughs> right. Like, like what is happening? This is yeah. insane. So insane. He, yeah. And that people didn't know who he was any longer. It was like, oh, if he hadn't passed away, he would still be doing some form of it. Right. And that's, it's almost like you're keeping your legacy alive. But like, some do some, I feel like Bill Hicks has an incredible afterlife. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, does he, I think, well, maybe not, maybe not. He's respected among comics, but right? Even when I listen to him, right. To hear him go off on Britney Spears for like 15 minutes about her, what her, her music or something. Right, like, right, right, right. You know, okay. 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 We're, we're, we're getting close to Lenny Bruce. <laughs> Material, like, right, 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 and right. it's not to shit on him. I mean, yeah, he's no, so great, no. but but it, like we're saying, like there's so many elements of it that is what about, cultural. Okay, what about Hedberg's afterlife? Hedberg is going to be like Sam. Like he has such great stuff. Oh, Comedian fans will always Boys like him. Comedy fans will always, and you, I think the, the jokes distill. They're yeah, just yeah. like so pure. But he's going to. All these great people. I mean, I mean, who in their who, who in passing, has elevated, elevated or maintained, or maybe prior with the public. Well, I know. I feel like Carlin and Pryor still have a like. I feel like there's a lot of Carlin mm -hmm. YouTube clips that still like still do big on, numbers. On, and the crazy thing on both sides, like he has yes. some conservatives yes. with his you know because his anti political correctness anti. anti to euphemisms he hated any kind of like oh god yeah the word speak oh yeah yeah the oh. environment the people oh, yeah, took yeah. Stuff. yeah yeah and he also has like his progressive kind of like social stuff so he truly just didn't give a shit so he just kind of i know so both sides could really he talked in. about that he said he said he could always smell it on a comedian when they had an agenda political mm -hmm. agenda yeah and he was like i don't i'm just an observer I'm not I'm, trying to get you to be yeah. vote a certain way. Yeah. He didn't even vote. He didn't stop voting in 1972. Really? Yeah. And so he's just, I just think he's a fascinating. So <laughs> mind. My God. I, I wish know. I could know the word, but thank you for. Have yeah. you digested, have you digested <laughs> all of his interviews? I'm sure. 
over it. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's even some stuff that he private interviews that I've now privy to. That's incredible. oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, wow, yeah. yeah, so good. I'm just hearing him talk about it in the when you get beyond even like what did the, you, you know ninth grade dropout. Yeah, yeah, ninth about grade that? dropout. Drop out. So smart, so intelligent. <laughs> Like it probably would have ruined him if he if he graduated high well, school. Well, he was an anti, you know, he's anti authority. Yeah, know, he's, everything from the church to yeah, the schools. Yeah. And to, I, to tell you the truth, some of his rants I don't agree with. Mm-hmm. But man, the he, only time he was really thinking. Oh my God, he. I have a painting of him in my office. What? Yeah. And, oh, that's right. That's right. And, that's right. That's right. Yeah, he, I, he's he's it. The only time... And Bob Saget painted that? Bob Saget... Well, a lot of people mistake it for Bob Saget. Oh, that's not the Bob Saget, no, Carlin? Oh, no. okay. And uh, <laughs> the only time he lost me was that one, I think it was with the tombstones and stuff, when he didn't offer any hope because he was so good oh, at ripping so things apart. Yeah. And that one was so bleak that I always need a little bit of, it's going to be okay. I know. And he didn't give you that in that special. I was like, oh, no, no. no. No, it is hard. Sometimes it's hard to watch it. But he, I look. I mean, his it's ridiculous. From nineteen fifty nine to two thousand and eight, that's a pretty good run. Yeah, and there were so many great ones. It's so anyway. Back to the the overarching question of yeah, does it age and like it's like no. I my I, question is not will comedians be mem be remembered. Uh-huh. I mean, who knows? Yeah, who knows? You know, yeah, you don't maybe, know. You know. Maybe that fan is the guy. That, you know who yeah, knows? People latch in and like, yeah, all yeah, of a sudden yeah. there's a revival. Right, right. But I'm I'm saying that uh, that as a rule, comedy is for the people now. Mm-hmm. Sebastian is for the people living today. Yes. Not Richard no. Pryor. Not even though you can. No. Uh, you can appreciate it. You can put uh, it on. Not appreciate. You can have uh, paintings in your house. Right. Yeah. Right, yeah. But uh, they're part of the right. But as far as the the impact of those belly laughs, yeah. the, the people that were having belly laughs to Laurel and Hardy, right. it was in that moment yeah. that we were laughing at people like Chappelle now. Right. Yeah, There's because there's, it's the dress, it's the cadence, it's the thing, it's yep. just, he, yep. you're, you're identifying mm-hmm. with us and bringing it out. Yeah, it's so in the moment. Yeah. It really is, it's, so it, that was the thing, it w- didn't make me nervous when I knew, but I really realized, if you really want to have a legacy, oh no, yeah, you gotta be a movie star. <laughs> That's a great point. You do. That's a great point. We're gonna be talking about, you know, Woody, Jack Nicholson's yeah, 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 performance yeah. in the beginning, you right, know, right, and, right, and right. still talk about, you know, Henry Fonda and all those. And oh, films are so big. What, I know, but what about your buddy, Jerry Seinfeld from Long Island? Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like his legacy as a sitcom a sitcom yes. star that, that well for some reason is still it's lucy right it's yeah 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 it's our, it's our lucy it's like that's going to be on well friends is i mean there's not like it's the only sitcom no but that's at a level of it's a devotion level. that's still mo- generations are still being turned on to and ha- has these bumps do you think it'll ever because you know do you think kids because i know kids love that show and it's they so do. and it's so adult in a weird way, and it's a cynical, you know. It's there's know. a cynicism to the whole thing that's no. just beautiful. Yeah, that's gonna last forever. Yeah, it's so, like Lucy. It's like yeah. Lucy, so right? I'm saying it's not just movies. I'm yeah. contra- you're contradicting you, yourself. You you, you take the bread it. back. Take no, the bread back. You take the bread. Okay, you take <laughs> you take the bread and and the book back. Oh Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, he really, he's incredible. Oh God, he's incredible. No, I know. I learned so much just from Give me a couple things him. you learned from him that I'll learn from you. Uh, Besides um, the writing every day, that kind of thing. Or- yeah. Well, beyond the writing every day, there's so many things he has on writing that have, I've learned from and we've kind of had a back and forth conversation about and yeah, it's yeah. kept it, it dialed in. I'm, list- I'm leaning thing, in. But the I'm thing leaning that he in. never really articulated, but I just watched him do. You gleaned. I gleaned. You did some gleaning. I was a gleaner. Yeah, okay, go ahead. And I knew when I went in his orbit, it was like, let's glean from this guy. (laughs) (laughs) Was that he never said, he's never done working on the joke. I love it. Which is so insane because he would have 
jokes that were so locked in yeah and so perf seemingly perfect and he can improve it and he still looks at it and will put it down in his pad it's like the stones still rehearsing satisfaction right it seems ridiculous it seems ridiculous but they do it right and they crush it and it's always improving maybe only he, Mick Jagger knows that it's improving right and Keith Richards if but maybe only Jerry does but he right. will always and even just like the moving two lines and putting that line there all after I know. after I know. 8 years moving that line to that line and being like oh, I can't believe it I finally did it like and he the puzzle re- is complete yeah that that level of I tend to blah and put it all out. That's not true. Get it really working and, and, then, and dial it in and distill it. But okay. at a certain point, I'm done looking at it. Right. Until think- I gleaned from him and I was like, no, you know what? You can always be looking at it. And be honest with yourself because is that joke killing the way that it does should? He, he doesn't tape and listen to himself, does he? No, I don't think so. I remember mm. him taping a couple times, but I don't think... He, very rarely if he does he he can he knows by mm. that reaction he's getting yeah i think so god i think so i, I think of him as like the mad scientist like he's yeah just like what is going on in that lab i know right yeah exactly what is going on in that lab man P- yeah purely purely unique in yeah. in in the i always call him the comedy chiropractor if i told you that no, I just called him the scientist. No, I You're call like him the my, comedy chiropractor because like, if you ever feel yeah, um, kind of out wait, of you sorts, mean that he's unlicensed? If you and kind of quackish, <laughs> he, he dropped out of med school, <laughs> right? Couldn't get, couldn't, couldn't he, even podiatry or, right, was right. too far reach. You know, organic chemistry, he couldn't do it. <laughs> That's the killer. That's the weeding out course. <laughs> yeah. No, he, go ahead. Keep going. He Sorry. just he. Uh, if you ever feel out of sorts, yeah, and you have a chance to talk to him yeah you are adjusted Uh, and you walk out of there feeling great about being a comedian no matter what right disappointments frustrations creatively professionally whatever yeah just the pure his love of being a comedian and how he truly to this day appreciates what it is and it's grateful to have a life to be a comedian and the grateful attitude he has about it makes you throw all of your cares away as as meaningless and right ego driven ego driven and obnoxious yeah (laughs) because you are so lucky to be a comedian that's awesome that is that is probably the biggest gift i've gotten from him and he has a private plane that he would take me to gigs. Oh, I see. So that, those are fun. Uh, the best gigs in the world. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Truly now great. I just remember Which that is, documentary comedian when mm-hmm. he had a thing with Orny. And he's like, I don't know if I want to be 60 in an airport. He's like, that's exactly what I want to be doing at 60. Yeah. Right. Exactly. He's a comic. Right. He is a comic. That's right. That's so. That's the weirdest thing is that he was able to, for whatever eight years to take that business trip to L.A. and create a sitcom. Yeah. I almost feel like it's sort of yeah like passive income for you know I mean you know just something right. That's like, no, if he had not hit, I remember the guy at Hilarities. I remember Nick at Hilarities uh-huh. saying that yeah. before the show, yeah, Jerry was a star. He was a millionaire. From before, his stand-up. Yeah, yeah, he was just a millionaire. Before. Back to the guys purely from stand-up. Yeah, if yeah. He hadn't had, if he had not developed that show, he still would have been one of the biggest comedians right, of, course. of all time. Of course, yeah. He was a machine. He was yeah, a machine. He was that good. But the uh, the workaround, when I, I'm just, I'm kind of obsessed with the guy. Mm. Um, the work, because he was like a generation, like the class ahead of me. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you're looking up to the seniors, you know, like a senior. Yeah. That's what I look up to. yeah. When did you start? Uh, 47. 47. <laughs> so, right, right on the heels of Artemis. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if you know this, but I middled for Mark Twain. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Yeah. And he was very good, but he wouldn't share any of the bar food. Would not. He was like, you can order your own wings. I was like, okay, Mark. I know about an opener like that. Have, oh, you, really? have you heard the stories no, like no, that? No, no. Oh, literally. I literally heard a story. I won't say who. Yeah. Who 
my friend got a gig work opening for this guy who was exploding yeah. and he just sat like with a fruit plate a fruit and cheese plate yeah, yeah, yeah. and ate it in front of the opener oh, no. and just like didn't even offer him <laughs> And this heart. is one of like our guys, yeah, our guys. My heart. Yeah, it was just like oh, maybe he's a germaphobe. That's the, I'm trying to put the best spin on. I it. always do that too. But yeah, no, yeah, sometimes yeah. it's just not <laughs> right. Right, he's a jerk. Okay, yeah, sometimes uh, you're just a jerk. <laughs> yeah. So uh, no, this has been a blast. Thank this you. is so much fun. Now, how does this work time wise? Are we close to the end? We're getting close. Okay, to the Okay, just end. tell me because uh, I don't want to. We're peek. getting close to the end. Yeah, I feel like we've covered some good ground. Uh, okay. I feel like the we recap. got some good food stuff in. Yeah. yeah I feel yeah. like you're going to enjoy this bread and you're going to send me a picture of the toast that you're eating. Okay. Um, will you appreciate it or will you be like, it's good, but it's not Arby's. Arby's <laughs> is incredible. America's roast beef. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's what it was when I was a kid. I know they keep changing it. Is it still incredible? Yeah. Give me your favorites. I it, it, There isn't. It's not, there isn't. It's like, what am I going to pick? Between uh, Carlin and Pryor, <laughs> you know, uh, and Kindler, the big yeah. three. <laughs> what, what are you asking me to pick? <laughs> so uh, it's just amazing. It's like my babies. They're all my babies. Uh, you roll into. I'll tell you the best fries are McDonald's. Everybody says that. Yeah, the best because they put sugar in them or something. I don't know what they do, but it's incredible. The, everybody yeah. says that. Yeah. Even yeah. the people that are like, I don't, I don't eat fast food. I'll, in and out. And five yeah, guys. Those, yeah. But still, Aaron, who is the producer on this show, uh-huh. uh, just, yeah, McDonald's fries. McDonald's fries. Yeah. 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 So um, I, I. Taco I, Bell? Yeah. Love it. Love, love it. The what bell. do you get at the Bell? Well, my new favorite is the Chalupa, the bacon. Um, what's it called? Bacon. Chick, chicken bacon one. There's a new. There was limited thing over <laughs> over COVID uh-huh. that was incredible. Chicken bacon chalupa. The chalupa. I just like saying chalupa. <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> uh, yeah. Best just, burger. Well, it's. Do you count Five Guys as a fast food burger? No, I'm gonna say In and Out and Five Guys are kind of their own. Like, right, thing, right, right, right. The um, big guys that you I, see in the Jack Nicholson. Well, I love the Whopper, which is what I just had before this this meeting. But okay. I have to say, I think Wendy's, believe, believe it or not, I think Wendy's burgers Wendy's. are incredible. Yeah. Are, Those are the we, best. Better than McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're making me rethink. No, 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 back. no. Don't. Believe me. You don't want to. You don't. You eat like this and you're just pre-diabetic. <laughs> Do you ever get the desserts? And I'm fast post, forward? Wait till I'm post-diabetic. <laughs> Do you ever, get the, you ever get the desserts, the little uh, sundaes, the ice cream cups? Yes, at McDonald's only. I love their their soft serve is incredible. Really, I, whoever invented soft serve ice cream? <laughs> yeah, I guess you get a Nobel Prize. Dairy I'm Queen? assuming it's a guy. You like Dairy Queen? Yeah, yeah. Anything that that swirls out of that machine <laughs> <laughs> seems impossible. Like, do you like the black and white? Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, <laughs> dipped chocolate yes, dip. I do, but it always uh, it yes, too, yeah, too melty. It's too melty, and I'm always worried. It's like, why is it not falling off in there? <laughs> well, isn't that Dairy Queen's thing? They, 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 yeah, the yeah. blizzard, the, yeah, the blizzard. upside down to show you that it's not there coming was, out. You know, uh, there. <laughs> as far as shakes go, there was a place back east called Friendlies. Ooh, used to have something I grew a, up on Friendlies. The Fribble? Did you ever? Oh, have that? the Fribble, the strawberry Jesus. Fribble. <laughs> okay, guys. Now no one is, <laughs> you just lost all your viewers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that strawberry was, fribble and those little crinkle fries. Yeah, those are the, that was a pretty good. But again, it's not fast food. But I just remember that yeah. place is like wow. That was a great place. Pretty good. That was kind of like old timey. You'd walk in, get right. a booth with right. your best gal. But I tell you what, I have done is I mean I know this is like a frozen thing, but I've cut down on all the Coca Cola. Like I used to drink it all the time, and now uh-huh. barely at all. Really? Yeah. I've switched over to lemonade, and then I dilute that like a grandmother, <laughs> <laughs> like a grandmother in Boca Raton. <laughs> like it's just, I might as well be, be drinking hot tea out of a glass. Like it's like, who have I become? But I will, I will, I was just too. Yeah. I love Coke too much. How for, many a day were you up to? Oh, I was at least a couple a day. A couple a day. I mean, I was, I was in like the eight a day kind of thing, but right. I just love it. I just think it's the best beverage ever invented. It makes you feel good after. It's like, right? Just <laughs> shot with sugar and ready to go. And caffeine. <laughs> yeah. 
with the sugar and the caffeine, but it's like, Come on. they really know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, so that's been my, that's how I keep, I rel, that's why I'm still. You always look good. You never, why, you never, you're always youthful and skinny oh, and I always you. feel like, uh, yeah, yeah pretty, you're one but, of those guys. But inside the blood is pretty. But inside just syrup. <laughs> <laughs> so was just like just gooey. gooey. <laughs> that's funny. Well, yeah. thank you so much for doing this. This really means a lot. The history of stand-up from Mark Twain to Dave Chappelle. I can't wait to. Uh, You're going to get a new version. You're going to get the updated version because this one is. There's yeah. a couple typos that are really. Easy. Will you be changing anything in the book after our conversation? You mean adding you to the book? Is that what you're <laughs> oh, saying? Oh, I'm not in it. Oh, oh weird. Geez, weird. I didn't mean, <laughs> did, not make, did not expect that curveball at the end. <laughs> uh, um, no, no, no. But um, but who knows? You're locked in. You're proud of it. You feel like you've done. I, there's not a part that you're like I should have put Ralphie. Okay, May okay in let it. me just put it. Give you an example of a mistake that's eating up at me. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Is um, like in this. I never even bothered to look at the index. Sure. So there's like there's just mistakes on the index. No like, one's looking at the index. Like Nick DiPaolo. Right. You know, you know him. He's a friend of yours, yeah, right? Yeah. It's Nick de Paolo, like his last name is Paolo. Right. As opposed to de Paolo is his last name, right? Right. Yeah. And I mean. So okay. Nick's in the book. <laughs> okay. We want to thank Wayne for being here on the show. We got a lot of stuff we got to get to. <laughs> Do you have a good serrated knife at home? Yeah. yeah All right, I, good. I, yeah. Tell this, me, tell me how to cut it. Tell oh, me how to cut it. Um, you're just gonna you're just gonna start here and go look, work your way across. You probably get rid of that that much. You throw it away. Throw it away. Give it to the dog. Whatever you want to do. All right. And then uh, and then you're just gonna work your way in. Uh, and that's incredible. Um, and it came out this morning. Tomorrow is pretty much. It's it'll be even better than today. Oh, I thought tomorrow it's over. It's no, you'll be good for several days. And do you refrigerate it? No. You put it with the butter? You can either throw a, a towel over it or just keep it in this bag. Wet towel? No. You know what? <laughs> you go to Arby's. <laughs> I'm going to give this to Aaron. I get the Arby's half pounder. <laughs> the Arby's half pounder is incredible. Thank you, Wayne. You're the best. Thank you so much for having me. All right. You're welcome. You're welcome. All That's right. it. Goodbye. That was the great Wayne Fetterman. I told you he's funny. Go get his book. The History of Stand-Up Comedy, from Mark Twain to Dave Chappelle. A good read, a good guy, and uh, we'll have him back for sure. And now, it's time. Let's get out the phone. Let's give a call to our good friend, Aaron Foley. Aaron. Good morning. Hi. Is it still Monday? Oh, glorious day. <laughs> are you having coffee um i'm having my cold brew that i make mm. it's my um you've been you've been making the bread i've been making the cold brew really yeah now i'm like i wouldn't say obsessed but i would say um very 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 interested <laughs> <laughs> how do you do it you take beans you put well, them first in a... it was, yeah, first it was the discovery of, like, what bean I like. Um, mm -hmm. You know, this is what happens when the world shuts down and you need some things to obsess over. Um, Please, there's nothing more important in the world. Um, but I came, I was, the, the couple of years before going just headfirst into the pandemic, I became very, I just was like, I love cold brew. So then I was like, all right, I'm going to make my own. So then it was, yeah whole beans, grind beans, and then figure out um, what bean you like best and then how many hours. So I, it's right mm -hmm. now it's uh, Groundworks Coffee, which I'm obsessed with, and 14 hours. Then uh -huh. I leave it overnight. I do 14 hours. Then I press it down, and then I put it in my glass jar, and then I do another day of waiting, and then wow. it's ama amazing. Wow, this sounds very intriguing. Right? And how big a how big a jar? Like how much are you yielding from that? Um well it's pretty potent, so I get I get like three morning coffees out of it. Oh, that's so great. But I only and do you don't miss like the, eight you ounces. 
eight ounces. So you don't miss the the hotness. You like the coldness. No, I don't really. I don't drink. I don't. You know, once in a while, latte or right. something. But like mm-hmm. this is year round in the cold. I'll still drink cold brew. <laughs> oh man, I am intrigued. I found. Yep. I uh, I've been drinking Verve coffee, which is so. It's the same thing. I'm obsessed with these beans, <laughs> and, <I've> found, <laughs> and I'm just like, it's still like a bad commercial from the 80s where I grind it and I smell it. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be a <laughs> wonderful day. And like the sun comes through the window. <laughs> I'm there in my robe. <laughs> oh, it's it's a it's a it's an update on Folgers. Um, yeah. <laughs> which is still jingling around in my head. Still then solid. Up, in your cup. <laughs> I was thinking of you. I had to call you today because I was. On the road, I was in Omaha, Nebraska, doing some shows. So exciting. And wow. then I get into the elevator, and I look down, and there is a big decal for the NCAA Women's Volleyball Tournament. And, yes. And there were a whole bunch of people in. It wasn't like a big and raucous because, of course, they didn't have crowds. They could only invite family and all the COVID kind of restrictions on it all and, and everybody had to pot up in their in their like schools and all that kind of stuff but uh I immediately thought about you because I as I was saying earlier on in the episode you have been yelling at the world to pay attention to women's sports for so long and it really does feel like people are finally starting to catch on do you feel like that's true? Because it seems to me like the enthusiasm is is definitely increased. The enthusiasm has always been there. What has right. been lacking is coverage. Right. If if it's not if you build it, they will come. It's mm-hmm. they're already there. Someone put a camera on it and put it on a television station. That's <laughs> right. that's that's what it is. Right. I mean, I go to I go to these UCLA softball games for years. The stadium is packed now. Uh-huh. Holly Rowe has you know ESPN is covering it, and Holly Rowe's on the sideline in the dugout. And suddenly, the, the softball is the fastest growing collegiate sport. So it's 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 right. it's been there. The enthusiasm for women's sports has always been there, but now it's you know more marketable. Now I mean, right. you know, it's so exciting. And 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 the volleyball, which is obviously happening right now. Yeah. Um, it's so all of a sudden, you know, I, I remember performing at this club a couple. It's usually this this tournament usually takes place in December, uh-huh. and um, I remember performing at a, a club in like Glendale, Arizona or something. And um, I went to just have a drink after I had some friends that came to the show and they had um, a couple, you know, games on. And I said, could you put the women's volleyball on? She puts it on for me. Like seven booths started like leaning in. And I was like, <laughs> it's so exciting. Like, you know, it's, like, it's, it's yeah. just like the level is so, you just have to, you have to be aware because. Right, right. It's, it's so it's good. A, it's so good. It's the so athletes good. are so great. And I, I even, I had like this moment during the men's basketball tournament this year where a good buddy of mine who's a, just a, a, a sports fanatic and he's always like giving me the you know the the in and out, ins and outs and stuff of like like the Yankees are tanking right now and I'm like what is happening <laughs> he gives me all the breakdown and uh, <laughs> and he was he was going off in this text chain about why everybody has to watch women's basketball and one guy was like nah I don't think so it's not as good and he's like no dude you don't get it he said. Women's basketball plays horizontally more than vertically because of of the uh, the style of play, and it's actually the original way that basketball should be played. It's it's intelligent. You've got to watch it. And he was like schooling everybody. I was like, oh yeah, this is this train has left the station. If these dudes are all are all on board after all this time, this is uh, they're finally paying attention. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, th- that's what it is. It's not like um, everybody. Like you, you're never gonna win an argument of people saying like, 
if you just take basketball, like men's basketball is so exciting. They're just, they're slam dunking and they're doing that. Yeah. It's totally yeah. exciting. It's totally fun to watch. This is, this is, if you want that, then watch that. If right, you also right. just want to watch phenomenal female athletes playing their game, then watch their game. You know right. what I mean? It, it, I get so sick of that, like, argument. And you're like, that's not an argument. That's an observation. Right. Like, it's, yeah, you, exactly. You know what I mean? It's like, I, yeah, dunking is super fun to watch. There's also, you know, a gazillion other parts of the game that is that are beautiful to watch and exciting. Yeah. And, you yeah. Know? and ultimately, it's the drama. It's the drama. That's what's so great about sports is like, there is a clock going, there is going to be, someone's going to be pulling their hair out at the end and other people are going to be euphoric and how we get there. And it's just so dramatic and it doesn't matter. I mean, look, I have been at, I have been at a uh, 10 year old girl basketball games where people were throwing chairs and screaming their heads <laughs> off <laughs> because it's still a game. Like it didn't. <laughs> it's still a game, it's and, so and funny. also the the. Um, I don't know. You know, it's it's the 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 stories. The stories right, are exactly. super captivating because there's um and it, w- it makes you know collegiate events men and women just sometimes just I think more exciting than the pros because this could be it you know and for right. women this was it but now. Right. Um, there are more and more opportunities for women. So the competition is better. Like if you just take, if you just take March Madness, usually in the women's game for the last, let's say 10, 15 years, you could pencil in four number ones. There was rarely an upset. Now there's more and more upsets because there's more and more, you know, um, competition. Yeah. It's just going to get better and better and better. So great. Well, thanks for spending some time with me this morning. I know you're uh, you're busy, and I'm definitely going to I'm going to be calling you and, and asking cold brew questions because I am a hot coffee person, but too many people that I love and respect are into cold brew. <laughs> I've got to uh, I've got to at least give it a shot. You just, you just just mix it up. I mean, we're we're starting to get to some like treacherous LA weather where it's like seventy seven, seventy eight. You know, yeah, you might yeah. you might get a little <laughs> hot under the collar and need some cold brew. <laughs> uh, you're the best. All right, All I right. love you. Um, oh, and you've got to come on the regular podcast. You got to come and be the guest in the studio. I'm on standby. All right, great. I'll have a I'll, great day. We'll do it after. We'll do it after the, I fail at the cold brew. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, bye, Tom. That's it, kids. I hope you enjoyed the podcast today. Breaking Bread is a, a great passion of mine, and I hope that you uh, are enjoying it. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you tell your friends. Make sure you give us reviews. We've been ticking up slowly in the reviews. So if you can uh, add some more, that would be very helpful. It helps to spread the word. Eat something great. Do something great. Enjoy your lives. We'll see you next week.